But at an estimate of 150 to 180 pounds, that silver owl is another fabulous addition to our hall and should hopefully get the sale room twitching. Perhaps this jaunty boater will be a showstopper? But then it's all hands on deck as I uncover this modern print of HMS Warrior, which Paul estimates at 20 to 30 pounds. Hopefully, it'll catch the eye of a nautically minded bidder on the day. There's still lots to do, but whilst Paul and Christopher keep up the pace, I think it's time for a proper catch up with our fascinating host. George, your career is so long and so varied, it's difficult really to know where to start, but I suppose we should start with the first big film role, which was in The Dam Busters. Did you at the time think, this is going to be the start of something big? Um, not quite. They put me under contract at Associated British Pictures to do The Dam Busters. So, in a funny way, I expected it. Uh, and I made about 14 or 15 pictures straight away. And then I, in four years, and then television came along, and in the next few years, I think I did something like 96 titles in Armchair Theatre, Play of the Month, Wednesday Play. Quite an experience. Yes, a great experience. Now, I have to ask you, is it true that Ian Fleming really did want you to be James Bond? Yes, yes. Um, I was having lunch at the Mirabel with my head of studio, Robert Clark, and Ian Fleming came over and he said, now there you are, Robert, uh, buy the books and make the films and there is your James Bond sitting there. And Robert made the classic remark, he said, Ian, they're good books, but they'll no make films. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest howlers in the film industry. <laughs> Now, be honest, when you've watched the films, have you sat there and thought, I could do that? No. <laughs> no, it certainly would have changed my life. And I'm not sure that I wanted my life changed. Mm. I do uh, always find it amusing that uh, I dubbed 16 reels of uh, George Lazenby's. So you have been Bond. I have been bombed. Yes. <laughs> you have also been the envy of an awful lot of men because you dated Brigitte Bardot. Oh, yes. Yes, we did, yes. This incident happened that a fellow fell in beside me. I said, I hate you. And I thought, oh, thanks. Why? And he said, Brigitte Bardot is all I have to say to you and marched on. <laughs> She was very beautiful, wasn't she? She was very beautiful. She yes. was very beautiful. But you must have thought you were very lucky at the time. Yes. Not a, not a great episode in my life. Uh, it was a bit naughty altogether because I was married. Mind you, if you're going to cheat, you may as well <laughs> cheat with Richard <laughs> Bardot. Go for the top. <laughs> go for Just the top. go for it. Yeah. The other thing about you, which I absolutely love, is that you're a great cook. You <laughs> love cooking, don't yes, you? Yes, I do, I do, I do. Well, knowing what a great cook you are, George, I can't wait to try some of that wonderful fish pate of yours. But I know that Paul is going to be cracking the whip, so um, I think we'd better get back to work, don't you? Yeah. You know, I could sit reminiscing with the charming George Baker all day, but duty calls. <laughs>